This is part two of three on chapter five, biological membranes. In this part of the chapter, we're gonna look at this question. So how and where are the components of the plasma membrane created? So remember in the first part of the chapter, we talked about how the plasma membrane is a fluid mosaic model. So we're gonna look at that mosaic model. So we have lipids, specifically phospholipids. And then we're also gonna be focusing on proteins so how and where those are created. And then we also have the carbohydrates, so that glycosylation part, where we attach a carbohydrate to a lipid or we attach a carbohydrate to a protein. First, we're gonna look at the synthesis of the phospholipids. And we're gonna specifically look at eukaryotic cells, so cells that have a nucleus and those membrane-bound organelles that you learned about in chapter four. So in your eukaryotic cells, the cytosol and the endomembrane system, they're responsible for synthesizing most of the lipids in the cell. So specifically, phospholipids are created or processed in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the building blocks to make these phospholipids, we need fatty acid tails, so we need our fatty acid building blocks. They're either made using enzymes in the cytosol, or the fatty acid building blocks can be taken from food that the cell has brought in. So we need our two fatty acid tails, and you can see those coming in on the left side of this image. So our two fatty acid tails, we have to activate the fatty acid tails. In addition to the fatty acids, we need a glycerol phosphate molecule. And we're going to attach our two fatty acids to the glycerol phosphate. And this is done using an enzyme called acetyltransferase and phosphatase right here. So we're just putting our fatty acids together with the glycerol phosphate molecule. Once your phospholipids are created, they'll be found in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then from there, that newly created phospholipid can be transferred to where it's supposed to go in the cell. There's three different transfer methods that lipids can go through. If the lipid is destined for the nuclear envelope or part of the endoplasmic reticulum, that lipid will just stay in the endoplasmic reticulum membrane and it can diffuse laterally to the nuclear envelope or can diffuse laterally to the rough or smooth ER. So that's one type of transfer. Another type of transfer is that the lipid, it can be transported using a vesicle and this is when we have to go to another organelle that's not directly attached to our smooth ER. So we can transport that vesicle to the Golgi apparatus. Um, it can become a lysosome, it can become a vacuole, or we can transport it way out to the plasma membrane. The third transfer method is called a lipid exchange protein. So this is just where we have a protein, it's gonna grab that phospholipid that we just made, and then that protein will carry the phospholipid and insert it into another membrane. So the lipid exchange protein, we can transfer one phospholipid at a time. If you use a second method, if you put phospholipids in a vesicle, that transfers a lot of lipids at once because you need enough to make up that vesicle. For the synthesis of proteins, in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, we have that ribosome structure. So if you remember from the previous chapter, chapter four, ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. They're creating all the proteins the cell needs. Synthesis of our transmembrane or integral proteins, that specifically occurs in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it's the ER part that's studded with ribosomes. So here we have a ribosome, so our orange structure at the top, that's a ribosome. That ribosome is going to be attached to the rough ER, so the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
And that ribosome is going to create our protein, which is the blue string coming out of the ribosome. So those are all our amino acids that are being put together in that chain. And this, remember, is a transmembrane or integral protein. So our protein is going to be sticking out a little bit on both sides of our membrane when it's done. These lipids and proteins, we can attach carbohydrates to them. So we attach little tags, carbohydrate tags. And again, that's called glycosylation. So if we specifically look at protein glycosylation, there's N-linked glycosylation. So this is where we attach a carbohydrate to a nitrogen atom on a sparagine amino acid. Another type of glycosylation is O-linked glycosylation. This occurs in the Golgi apparatus. And this is where we add a sugar or add a carbohydrate to an oxygen atom on serine or theronine. So those are another two different amino acids. So there's different types of glycosylation that can take place. But again, basically you're just going to attach a carbohydrate to that protein. So you're doing some protein processing. And this is showing that glycosylation, so on the left we have a carbohydrate tree, and it's in the green, and we're specifically doing the N-linked glycosylation. So we're going to be taking that carbohydrate and we're going to be attaching it to a nitrogen atom on an asparagine, theranine, or serine amino acid on our protein. And then once that protein is created, you can see on the far right hand side we have our blue protein, our blue transmembrane protein, and we have our green carbohydrate that has been attached to it. So that is the glycosylation. Once your protein is synthesized and it's gone through the glycosylation process, those proteins, they can be directed into the endoplasmic reticulum membrane, unless if they're going to go to one of the semi-autonomous organelles, so the chloroplast or mitochondria. So most of them are going to go into the ER. They're going to go through the processing, go through the glycosylation. They're going to be put into vesicles and sent to other regions within the cell. So again, here we have our three different pathways that proteins can follow. So one of them is that the proteins created in the cytosol, and this is the first pathway going off to the left, and then that proteins created in the cytosol, it remains in the cytosol. The path we just looked at is where the protein is created with the rough ER. That protein enters into that endoplasmic reticulum, then the protein goes through processing, it's sent to the Golgi apparatus, goes through that organelle, and then that protein's put into a vesicle. And that vesicle can become a lysosome or vacuole, it can become a proxosome, or it, the protein can be sent off to the plasma membrane and embedded in there. The other protein pathway is where the protein is created and then it's sent off to the nucleus, the mitochondria, or the chloroplast over here. So mostly what's responsible for protein synthesis are the ribosomes and then also the rough ER. So in this section of chapter 5, we looked at how and where the different components of our biological membranes are created. So just in summary, phospholipids, they're created in a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and then they can be transferred to other membranes in the three different ways I covered. Transmembrane proteins, they're created in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They can go through glycosylation, so they can have carbohydrates put onto them. And then those proteins can be transferred to other membranes in vesicles.